The last thing I expected from developer Tango Gameworks was a vibrant, fun-loving action game with the heart of a cartoon I would have absolutely loved. The studio is primarily known for the dark and creepy likes of Evil Within or Ghostwire Tokyo, but Hi-Fi Rush is instead filled with a joyous, youthful personality seen in its stunning animation, art style, and characters. And while the surprising change of pace is already refreshing, Tango's greatest accomplishment is in how it expertly executes on the singular concept that permeates Hi-Fi Rush's design. It's that rhythm is everything. Nearly every element of Hi-Fi Rush's world is impressively tied to the rhythm of its alternative rock soundtrack. That's because the protagonist, Chai, had a surgical mishap which left his iPod stuck in his chest. This makes him a target as he's labeled a defect by the evil robotics megacorp Vandalay Industries. But now he can see and feel the pulse of his music coursing through the vivid, industrialized world around him. And that's his greatest weapon. This playful setup sets a strong tone, and things only get better from there as Hi-Fi Rush layers on a fantastic crew of allies, charismatic villains, bombastic fights, effortless humor, poignant satire of our tech dystopia, and some genuinely warm moments. Chai, that was beautiful, mate. From so many angles, Hi-Fi Rush is able to showcase its uniquely charming spirit. It's me, Peppermint, come on! At its best, combat creates a harmonious flow where music is your guide every step of the way. Chai always executes his attacks on the beat regardless of your own input timing, but keeping in rhythm with the BGM's BPM rewards you with extra damage rather than punishing any missed notes. While Hi-Fi Rush uses a similar foundation as Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, the constant tie to the music results in a type of satisfaction I just don't get from other stylish action games. This rhythmic system leaves no ambiguity in combo timing and paces itself in a way that allows room to consider each follow-up move, whether it be extending combos, air juggling, dodging, parrying, closing the gap, or calling in a partner attack. Every enemy's attack pattern also plays by the same rules, letting me confidently avoid telegraphed attacks and approach them like a dancing rhythm game. Sometimes that inspiration becomes more explicit, Tougher foes and some bosses break into brief rhythmic minigames that require a sequence of parries to counter their last ditch efforts. And the reward? Delivering a flashy final blow. The rhythm game Die Hard in me got hyped every single time I had to do this, and getting perfect strings of parries left me nodding in satisfaction. Enemies gradually evolve in complexity, and things get chaotically fun in encounters that mix and match enemy types, so I never felt like I was simply hammering away to a basic 4-4 time signature. That said, the targeting system could occasionally put me in a precarious position. Since there's no manual lock-on, I'd sometimes hook onto or gravitate towards enemies I didn't intend to target, leaving me vulnerable. It works well enough for most fights, and with all the tools at my disposal, I could overcome any brief moments of frustration by changing my approach. Because music is the driving force behind its design, anything that syncs to the beat through audio cues is also represented with distinct visual cues. You can also activate an on-screen metronome at any point to help keep time more explicitly, so those who may struggle with rhythm games or need assistance with the audio do have some options here. Platforming and puzzle sections between the staged combat encounters operate on the same principles. Platforms and key objects retract and move to the beat, making it impossible for Hi-Fi Rush to feel like it's pulling any cheap tricks. Nailing the timing is about seeing the environment as an extension of the music, although movement is a bit sticky for these sections and doesn't quite match the fluidity I'd expect. The consequences for mistakes aren't dire, but it's still a noticeable inconvenience, albeit a minor one. Looks suspicious. Now the closer you look at Hi-Fi Rush's world, the more you see how deep the rhythmic ethos runs. Chai's footsteps, his snapping idol animation, allies' bounciness when called forth, the trees and rocks bobbing in the environment, even building infrastructure all move to the groove. No matter where you turn, someone or something is jamming out to the same song as you. That attention to detail instills a lively sense of momentum around every corner. While the fusion of rhythm and action is outstanding, what makes Hi-Fi Rush truly memorable is its charismatic crew. 
Chai's cool enough as the goofy, irreverent everyman, but it's the supporting cast that makes the journey feel whole. Peppermint is the slick badass who's the brains behind the operation to take down Vandalay's band of comically evil executives. She steals every scene she's in, and in many ways, this story is more about her. Chai? 808 is Peppermint's adorable robot cat, who will win your heart by simply doing cat things. Macaron is the big softy whose comforting demeanor contrasts with his brute force capabilities. <laughs> Hi-Fi Rush breathes life into these characters with some of the best animation in games, period. Cutscenes let their personalities shine bright as they fight to the beat and express themselves in such charming fashion. They're also critical during battle, and I always love seeing their partner attacks play out. It really sells the idea that taking down Vandalay is a team effort. Genuinely funny dialogue, impeccable comedic timing, and superb voice performances make warm-hearted and laugh-out-loud moments possible, and that stays consistent through the roughly 10-hour runtime. There's an amalgamation of nerd culture references that surprisingly fit the tone, and a bunch of clever little goofs and gags along the way. But the only way to see the big picture is to not look at all. I think you need coffee. But I also found an explicit and sobering satire of modern work culture and the tech industry within a capitalistic dystopia the more I examined each level. Hi-Fi Rush makes melding all these seemingly disparate elements look effortless. While most of the music is original, licensed tracks make for some sick needle drops at key moments. You'll hear the likes of Nine Inch Nails, Number Girl, The Prodigy, The Joy Formidable also play by the rules of Hi-Fi Rush's universe, adding layers of instruments in clever ways during gameplay or wonderfully capturing the emotion of the moment. The rest of the soundtrack bounces off of original jams from Hi-Fi Rush's composers who replicate the modern garage rock sound nicely. These songs tend to blend in the background catchy enough to get me to tap my foot as I'm playing, but mostly serving their purpose as a guide for combat and puzzle timing rather than standout songs on their own. It may also be a symptom of having every other aspect be outstanding that anything that's simply good gets lost in the shuffle. However, there is one original song in the late game stage that I dare say gives me Persona vibes. Upbeat acid jazz with a Rhodes piano backed by sharp orchestral strings and funky bass as I pull up to infiltrate a gaudy museum? Madarame, eat your heart out. It's an evocative track to perfectly frame the moment while being a prime example of how this game wields music so well. I swear, Hi-Fi Rush could be a premier cartoon series. It's got best-in-class animation, endearing heroes to cheer for, and villains you love to hate. But on top of that everlasting charm, it turns a dynamic rock soundtrack into its greatest weapon, putting meticulous detail into syncing the beat to all aspects of the experience. It gives combat a uniquely satisfying momentum that other stylish action games don't offer, even when the platforming and targeting system drops a couple notes along the way. At the end of the day, Hi-Fi Rush is a memorable journey that marches to the beat of its own drum and without a doubt stands among the action greats. For more on the early hit games of 2023, be sure to check out our reviews of Fire Emblem Engage and the Dead Space Remake. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Thank you.